بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما أنتم توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين أما بعد Today we're going to start about, uh, the ayah uh, of Surah Al-Hadid from 12 to 15. But before I wanted to start, I really wanted to introduce you to this Quran. This is by Zaki, Ahm uh, uh, Zaki Ahmed, Ahmed Zaki Ahmed. It is a wonderful, wonderful translation to the Quran. It is a very easy English, even for the uh, uh, foreigner. Uh, it's uh, amazing because it not only translated but also interpreted as its translation so a lot of time it says you know and in Badr you have done this and this and that <clears throat> so you understand what the verses are talking about you know without any uh, uh, um, you know interpretation so I just wanted to recommend that uh, Quran for you but you can get this from we get it from I got it from Amazon okay. And then uh, Dr. Zaki Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Zaki Hamad, he actually married me and my wife. Oh. And he was from down south, and he's one of the scholars in the Al Azhar University. Oh. Yeah. This, I mean, this same Quran was also introduced in Isna, and they said this is one of the better times. It's, it's, um, it's, it's really amazing. I, I bought one too. Yeah, it, it is really amazing book, and it's so easy to, to understand, and it's. And, and it's, it's, it's so well written, you know, and I was actually, sh actually shocked because I was rely, you know, depending on the other books. And when I saw that, I said, well, you really, I don't need to go into the interpretation because I'm just reading and interpreting and translating in the same time. Okay. Alhamdulillah. But today, today, inshallah, we'll talk about Surah Al-Hadid. But uh, I wanted to just give a little bit of a, uh, but what, surat, uh, what is Surah Al-Hadid? And Surah Al-Hadid. Uh, it is uh, uh, mentioned as a Surah Al-Hadid because in it is the strength of man in Al-Hadid itself. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala sent down Al-Hadid because in it is the strength of man in a time of peace and a time of war and in the manufacturing and the development of, of nations. So there's a lot of benefits. So that's why it is called Surah Al-Hadid. Uh, the core of this Surah is the spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it softened the cruelty of the heart <coughs> there is nine highlights of this uh, of this surah the first highlight of course is gl glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the demonstration of his power and his knowledge and the second thing is that uh, man is a trustee over Allah Azza wa Jal is wealth. Uh, because the money that we earn is not ours. There's the money that we earn is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's money. The third is reminding us of the covenant that we made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, Him alone. And then the fourth is the preference of those who have spent before the conquering of Mecca as to those who have spent after the conquer of Mecca that there are difference. The fifth one is that what we're going to talk about, which is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have uh, 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 made as a small scene of the day of judgment of the hypocrites. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And then the uh, uh, sixth one, and we turn back to the how to describe the how to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, and the barakah that you get it from him. And then the uh, seventh is describing the reality of this fake life. That's in Surah 18. I mean, it's Ayah 18, excuse me. Then the eighth one is Al-Qada wal Qadr, Al-Iman bil-Qada wal Qadr. And then the last one, of course, is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why he sent down the prophets and the books. And it, it is for the justice and right, basically. Um, the um, establishing the deen requires two fundamentals. Al-Kitab wal-Mizan. Al-Kitab, to show you the direction who you 
should worship, how you should worship, and so forth. And Mizan is to establish the, uh, uh, the justice and the rights of everyone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, يَوْمَ تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ بُشْرَاكُمُ الْيَوْمُ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ يَوْمَ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتُ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا انْظُرُونَا نَقْتَبِسْ مِنْ نُورِكُمْ قِيلَ ارْجِعُوا وَرَاءَكُمْ فَالْتَمِسُوا نُورًا فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورٍ لَهُ بَابٌ بَاطِنُهُ فِيهِ الرَّحْمَةِ وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ قِبَلِهِ الْعَذَابِ يَقُولُونَ يُنَادُوهُمْ أَلَمْ نَكُنْ مَعَكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى ولكنكم كنتم ولكنكم فتنتم أنفسكم وتربصتم وارتبتم وغرتكم الأماني حتى جاء أمر الله وغركم بالله الغرور فاليوم لا يؤخذ منكم فدية ولا من الذين كفروا مأواكم النار هي مولاكم وبئس المصير the hip, the, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran speaks about heaven and hell he always speaks about the disbeliever and the believer, kafir and mu'min. In these ayat, Allah Azza wa Jal is describing and talking about the believer and the hypocrites. And how, and the scene, so I want you to imagine, because this is like almost like a small little film. And that is that, uh, 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 you know, and the, the people who had faith, you know, um, and who thought they had faith. So there was people who had faith, and people who thought that they had faith. And those al munafiqun. Yawma tara, Allah Azza wa Jal is talking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yawma tara, the day you Muhammad shall see your entire ummah in the day of judgment. And you shall see them with their light streaming in front of them and on their rights. So he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, يَوْمَ تَرَى يَا Muhammad, You will see, ya Muhammad, in the day of judgment, all the ummah in front of you. Those with pure heart shall be advanced with the light comes on from within and streaming and from the right. And from the right, because in the Quran, I've talked before about receiving the book with your right, and then this is the book of deed. This made, you know, uh, 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 this faith made me act in the world and in this life in a certain way. And why is light? Again, because light is a purity. Is this is what we get in this uh, 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 world? And then at the haq. Uh, Rahimahullah have said that everyone has a light until they get to the Surat and then the light of the Munafiqeen goes off while the light of the Mu'min but the way to the Surat and the way to the Jannah as is described is a dark dark way to go all the way so actually your light is the one that is going to lead you to Jannah to paradise. This is the light. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that some people's light is going to be shining from a city to another. And as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud has said, some people's light will be flickering because it's going to be so light, so small, that it's going to go on and off. And that it describes how people are going to go fast into heaven and the one that is going to take their time. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, congratulations, Bushraqum al congratulations to those who were patient and had their light. To you there is Jannat, heavens, in which it will run beneath them rivers that are flowing. But Al-Munafiqoon, at that time they have no light and they're on the Sarad. So I want you to think about it. Those mu'minun are going into working into heaven, into paradise with their lights. 
And as you walk with the lights, there is a light is in the front. As you pass, it's always darkness before you, right after you. So the munafiqun from far away are looking at those and they're saying, well, we can't go without our lights. We don't have any lights. So the munafiqun is telling those Muslim or those mu'min, those believer, wait up. Indhuruna naqtabis min nurikum. Naqtabis means borrow from your light. So he's saying, wait up for us so that we can catch. And naqtabis is like when someone have a torch with a light and you get a little stick and you put the stick on the torch to get more lights. So let us borrow your lights. Remember that Allah Azza wa Jalla says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِي وَبَنِيهِ I'm not going to look behind and I'm going to, not going to answer anyone because my first goal that I want to put my feet into paradise, I am not safe. I am not safe until I am in paradise. So I am not going to look behind and I'm not going to say anything. Except a few. So some, it's, there is two opinions. One opinion says, when they said that, Two opinions. The angels have responded to them, go behind, or the mu'min have answered them and say, go behind. And that, when he says, this is a mockery. This is sarcasm. Go back and get your own light, because they can't get a light, the only light that they can get in this world. So that was a mockery, in a way. So you say, oh, it's all about me. I don't care about my father, I don't care about my mother, I just want to get to heaven. Seriously. And then you say, well, can I get some light from you? And Munafiqun didn't hear this. They didn't want to hear that they say, go back. So as they're going and approaching is a giant massive wall that comes between them. Now, that wall has a door. Lahubab. So that inside of that wall is what the mercy and the pleasure and the light. The outward of the wall is where is darkness. And then the munafiqun on top of that are seeing the hellfire approach him. The hellfire are coming. فضرب بينهم بصور له باب باطنه فيه الرحمة وظاهره من قبله العذاب. Torments is on the right side. And the door, of course, can be open only from the inside. And this is very important. And munafiqun, they say to the believer, open up, open up. Alam nakun ma'kum. Weren't we with you? Didn't pray, we pray with you? Didn't we eat with you? Didn't we go to Umrah with you? Didn't go to Hajj with you? Didn't go to school with, with you? Didn't we do all this with you? And the munafiqun would, and the munafiqun is, wanna, they see the hellfire coming. And they thought, that they are mu'min. They thought they're believers. They say, didn't we do all that with you? But the believer are answering them. Those hypocrites assumed that they were believers. And be between the hypocrisy and iman is a hair. Is a hair. Scary. One side feel safe, and another side, they feel the pleasure. So those believers are saying, Bala, alam nakun ma'kum, weren't we with you? He says, Bala, of course, indeed you were with you, with us. 
وَلَكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ But you have put yourself in a situation to be tested with your faith. You got yourself in an environment that you will be tested. And fatana means is to put someone into the test. And we all ask Allah Azza wa Jal not to put us in this test. If you find a place that you know yourself is bad for you, you get out of it. Those people knew that this place is bad for them. This environment is bad for them, but they had so much confidence in themselves that they're going to take care of themselves. Some of them wanted to be in the spotlight. So he went into media. And did all the wrong things to be on the side of a zalim and unjust. Some of them wanted to be a politician to help people. And they got into politics to help people. But they polluted themselves over time. Brothers, it is not like this, belie this believer became disbelievers. It is just bad company. It is bad company. And the shaitan is the most patient of all. This process takes a long time. Those were Muslim. They had their lights. They said, you had your light. But you decided to go after fame. You decided to go after the world. And you decided to go after money and wealth. And Allah Azza wa Jalla have said in the Quran, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ Don't even lean a little bit toward the zalim that it will touch you with the hellfire. And most of these people who leans toward that, that they were Muslim. Those people that are doing the injustice, they pray like we pray. They do hajj. They do all these things. But they think that what they're doing is not a big deal. Are, are we talking here about those hypocrites within the religion of Islam or even outside? No, that's the religion of Islam. Because the Quran is very clear, it's saying, Alam nakun ma'akum. Weren't we with you? You were my people. They say, yes, you were with us. So there were people that they knew. وَلَكِنْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ You wanted to do this. You see, Bashar al-Hafi, one of the ulama, a man came, a tailor came to him, and he says, Imam, I am a tailor, and I do stitch a garment of a zalim, an unjust. And I am afraid to be one of those who Allah Azza wa Jal said about them, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ Am I doing something wrong? He says, no. He says, the person who sold you the thread is the person who leaned toward the zalim. But you are the zalim. You are the zalim. Why is that? Because Anyone who contribute in any way to a zalim becomes a munafiq. Why is that? Because the zalim or the leader who is unjust, if you support him in cleaning his house, driving his car, cooking for him, you know, being a guard for him, being a tailor for him, you know, buying him things, selling him things, if you do all that, you're supporting him. If you don't do any of that, he cannot run a country. He cannot be a zalim. And that's what we are talking about. 
those munafiqeen that they do support, they think inside them that this is very simple. But it's not simple. It's so huge in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. <coughs> what are Rabbastum? I have to ask you a question. You know, in the uh, one in the ayat number twelve, you used a a qualifier, uh, which is that whose hearts are uh, what's the word? Can you mean? Yeah, yeah, heart, uh, yeah, soft. So, uh, so I just okay. Now, this is a very big qualification, you know, like whose heart is pure. That's the word you use. Mm -hmm. We are human beings, and Allah Ta'ala has crea created us with many deficiencies, right? Now, so to, to, for a man or for a woman to have pure heart is a very big uh, achievement, you know, mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of scary, because how many can claim that his, his heart is uh, uh, tayyibin, you know? Mm -hmm. For example, the, the ayah that uh, I remember that goes simultaneously with this is, so I have a question of the Buddha, how, how Tayyibin is a very big requirement, you know? I mean, even a, we, we see it all the time. A man spent his lifetime, you know, in the service of Islam and Allah and all that, and then he does very stupid things, okay? Well, you see, uh, uh, all the sons of Adam, they make mistakes. But the best of them that makes mistakes are the, those who repent. And as in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they said, O oh, Rasulullah, when we are with you, we are filled with spiritual and spirituality. But when we go home, we are with our wives and with our children and the world that takes us. He said, Ana kadarik. He says, it's okay. He said, this is life. And if you did not commit sin, Allah Azza wa Jalla would repeal you with people to commit sin. Because think about it. If you are rich and you have everything in your life, you wouldn't raise your hand and say, Allah may forgive me. You see? And this is the connection that Allah Azza wa Jal says. And in the Quran also it says, I think it says in Surah Al-Najm, إِلَّا اللَّمَمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everything. Al-Lamam, which is the small sins, that he doesn't want, cares. He doesn't care about it. This is the purity. And then also remember that we're not going to enter into heaven with our deeds. We will enter with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one thing that we have to keep in mind is that any person who has the amana, any person who has the amana, you can, you can receive from him the best and the noblest of human quality. Right? So the amana is a very important uh, pillar of our deen. And if you have this amana, then all of your act is going to be according to what you were taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasul. So am I making any sense to you? Okay. So, I'll, so and then they says, وَارْتَبْتُمْ I mean, uh, وَتَرَبَّصْتُمْ تَرَبَّصْتُمْ means you procrastinated. They tell him, you procrastinated. Oh, you know what, uh, you know, I know that I have a problem with drinking, but Ramadan is about eight months from now, and after Ramadan, I will not do it, and I will, you know, I will stop it. Oh, I know that this is haram and so forth, but if I'm going to do the Umrah and I'm going to wash up and I'm going to be fine. You're always delaying and always delaying your repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَتَرَبَّصْتُمْ And then it says, وَارْتَبْتُمْ After tarabbus, this is procrastinating 
and then wartabtum, which means here that you're starting falling into doubts of your deen. And in our era, it's very easy to fall in doubt with the deen. Because we have so, much, so many of those they call Muslim thinkers. That they keep telling you things that in the Quran that is not interpreted the classical way. For instance, we have in Egypt one scholar, his name is Sa'ad al-Jin al-Hilali. And he's a scholar in Al-Azhar. And he says that alcohol is not haram except what you produce from grapes. And that is a scholar of Al-Azhar. Alcohol is not haram except what you produce from grapes. So most of these people who are irtaptum, they go into doubt, they seek those people so that they can justify their action. And that is, it starts to frail them down a little by little. And then they start thinking, it says, well, you know what, you have the Quran of Hafsa, you have the Quran of Ali ibn Abi Talib, you have the Quran of Ibn Mas'ud, and then the, the Quran is not in the right serial. No, thank you. Right. It's, it's not in the right sequence and so forth and you know so many people are talking about Al-Bukhari you know that Al-Bukhari is, is not really authentic there's so many hadiths that are bad and they're so they start doubting the Quran so uh, this uh, scholar from Al-Azhar did he get a wahi from Allah Ta'ala where, where is his Quran you know, where is his uh, Document. How did he well, you know, uh, he can find the documents from, I mean, I am, uh, again, those are people who are knowledgeable, but those are the people who became the sheikhs of the Sultan. Now, the problem also, Ahmed, with those people is, so you and me, we are knowledgeable, we have certain education, but that when half of the Egyptian population can't even read or write or they will, oh, that, that sheikh told us this. That too, absolutely. So it, the level of education can't even keep up with these and how oh, this sheikh and the Azhar are an authority and religion. Right. And, and by the way, you know, brandy and cognac are made from wheat. Yeah, okay, well, that's, that's halal. That's <laughs> okay, <I'm laughs> you know, it's really, they listen to sufaha. Yes. They listen to sufaha, to foolish people, in order to justify their faith. And then, وَغَرَّتْكُمُ الْأَمَانِ غَرَّتْكُمُ الْأَمَانِ الْأَمَانِ again, you've been infatuated with money and with fame. And you have put this world and this life in your heart, not putting it in your hand. And that's a big difference. You can be very, very rich, but all this richness, and all this pressure is in your hand. You don't care about it. But a lot of people will put it in their heart and will fight for it and will kill for it. وَغَرَّتْكُمُ الْأَمَانِ وَغَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ وَغَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ حَتَّى جَاءَ حَتَّى You know, until the command and the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal came for you to pass away. You're contemplating with yourself with all these worldly things, procrastinating, you know, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. And then the second thing is our taptum. You start doubting a little bit about your deen and all of a sudden the time have come. The time have come. Hatta amrullah. وَغَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ And غَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ That the shaitan the shaitan, the best of deceivers, was successful to deceive you. Every man, now I wanted to, you know, so all these worldly things, you know, 
People are looking for happiness in this world by buying a car and then it was going to be this car, they may be enjoying it for a week or two. The worldly things that they look for and they buy these things and then it goes away and then they buy another one and then they buy another one and it is staring, the happiness is staring them in the face. And that is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tying with held in, into the rope of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is all the happiness and the pleasure that you will ever get. Every man made things you get bored of it. Every God creations, it lasts forever. If you go out at night in your backyard in the pitch black and you look at the stars, you never get bored of it. You sit in front of the ocean. You never get bored of it. You buy a car, you get bored of it. You buy a watch, you get bored of it. But the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, you, you never get bored of it. Those people that irtabtum wa amani that they wanted all this life, and Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah al Rum. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, he says, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they merely know the outer nature of the life of this world while they are utterly unmindful of the day of hereafter. You see, you know, this is the nature of this munafiqeen or the nature of the munafiqoon. أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ Didn't I have a covenant with you? Oh, son of Adam, not to worship the shaytan. And that is what the irtabtum is, that they have followed the footsteps of shaytan in this world. And I'm not saying you don't have these pleasures and everything else, but you have it in your hand. And you not have it in your heart. فَالْيَوْمَ لَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْكُمْ فِدْيَةً Now they're given all these chances all the time in this life. Today I shall not take any ransom from you or from those who disbelieve. What an awful destination you shall go to. Which is the hellfire. That it is the difference. This is the inter, this is you know uh, in in a short um, um, interpretation of uh, uh, this three stories. Do you have any questions? I have one question. I have actually a couple. Yeah. So when I uh, uh, read, you know, the uh, we have in the Quran Allah reminds us so many times. Adam al Islam and his wife, you know, when they were in the Jannah. Mm -hmm. He, he was given one simple instruction. Who? Allah, Allah told them. Told Adam. Adam okay. Not to go to that. Oh, <coughs> yeah. After Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. But they did. Yeah. And they ate the fruit. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Then when, I was, when I think about it, okay, so they did not commit uh, zina or, you know, adultery, didn't murder anybody, didn't steal from anybody. Just ate the apple, you know, and it was such a big sin that they had to be kicked out from the heaven, mm -hmm. right? And that the, the punishment was extraordinary. Okay, yeah, all right. Compared to the the, the the sin that was committed. Okay, no. uh, let me uh, let me just let me just answer this one. First of all, nas is from nasia is forgetfulness. Human being is forgetful. Okay, this is number one. When Allah Azza wa Jal created Adam and his wife, He didn't create them for heaven. He didn't create them to live in heaven. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that this earth was created for you before Adam was born. So Adam, the heaven Jannah is the stage for Adam to be created, but was not his home. 
And the Quran is very clear to, for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, inni ja' before he created Adam, inni ja'ilun fil ard khalifa. Right. So Adam was not created to be in heaven, right. to live in heaven. Adam was created to come into earth for the Umran, for the development of earth and mankind. And also, as the hadith says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created all of the souls and all of the risk of the souls of 50,000 years before the creation of man. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't create Adam to live in heaven. He created Adam and put him on earth and he said to him, that I have a way for you to go back. For me, I don't think this was a sin. Okay. You know, this was a reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring Adam into earth in a way, you know, but remember that Adam also knew that he was coming down to earth. And his job is the Umran of the earth. So I don't think, yeah. But, but the, 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 there is a point too here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Adam saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? He didn't see him. He didn't see him, he mm -hmm. created him. He created him, but he didn't see him. He didn't see him? No. Nobody saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no evidence whatsoever anywhere that. Uh, 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 because he created him, like. He, cre he, he, didn't, see he didn't see him. Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, although Adam knows the existence of Allah more than anybody else. You see? So, so Adam alayhi salam was created specifically to come to Umar al-Ard. So one come at the that of the sin, that's, that's the most sin you can have because you have one instruction. I mean, you said you didn't steal, you didn't do, it's only two people in Jannah. That, so you didn't, that's and the, un the other thing I wanted to mention to you. I'm sorry, before I forget. Uh, yeah. you said let me finish this. Let me finish. Okay. Okay. And then you, you, you oh, keep yeah. on. Okay. Just rem yeah, remember that. Remember one thing that is very important that many people says, if it wasn't for Adam, would been in, would be in heaven, right? right? That is wrong because it should be the opposite. It should be if it wasn't for Satan, we would have been in heaven. Right? If it wasn't for Satan, because look, Allah Azza wa Jal have given a shaitan and Adam an equal opportunity to repent. Right? Equal opportunity. He says, Alam lakum al Didn't I tell you not to eat from this tree? What was the response? Rabbana dhalamna anfusna wa in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna wa kalimna. Aratul! Immediately, Allah forgive us. And he says to Shaitan, why have you not prostrated when I commanded you? He says, I am better than him. Look at the difference. Arrogancy. Yes. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kicked him from heaven, he promised him that what he's going to do, he's going to lead most of humanity astray. And the, so he went in if, it, if he had prostrated and said, Oh Allah subhanahu oh, I have made a mistake, I am very sorry. You know, and I will prostrate right now, it would have been a s d different, right? History would have been written differently, right? <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so what is the second? No, I was just going to, so, like you said, he, made, he committed, he thought he committed a sin, that's why he immediately said, Rabbana Zalamna. Uh huh. I've done Zulam on Yeah, so. right. And I see, what is the big zulum? He just ate an apple. And, uh, it's not like, like I said, he didn't kill anybody, he didn't yeah. eat apples all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who makes halal and haram. Yeah. He makes the right and wrong. Yeah. Nobody else. And there's many things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threw up the prophets that was haram, he made it halal. So we all are subdued to the law of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if Allah Azza wa Jal come and say to me, do not drink this water, I'm not going to drink it. It doesn't matter. If Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, you know what, I will 
do not eat that apple. But remember why Allah Azza wa Jalla is doing that. He's making a test. And this is a test of the will of humanity and human being. Any more questions? No, but the, another point, really, the whole thing about the apple is really to 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 be obedient to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, nothing really more than it's not really more than that. And he he had a direct order. There was no Jibril in between, or there's no right there. And when we we never had that privilege, we're only going to have that, inshallah, in the day of judgment or in paradise. And there was a lot of a lot of other apple trees. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, specifically said, yeah. yeah. In, in a direct so you can go ahead and eat from that tree. And there is apple in there, and there is apple in there. You know, if you ask me for apple, I'll bring you apple. This is Jannah, Jannah, right? If you ask, me. but this is forbidden. That's what. So he disobeyed Allah. Right. Yeah. That's the yeah. sin. That right. And I think also, you know, when some yeah. scholars say it's not the the sin that you're committing is the against the will of Allah that you're going to. It's not yeah, that, that's the disobey. You know, it's, it's not the signal fast yeah. good, right? Right. Like, I think, fast. Yeah, I think maybe maybe I'm wrong, but <coughs> he was told not to go near the tree. Yeah. So the idea is when something like you know, as they say, don't go. Don't don't commit adultery, but don't go near adultery. Yeah. The idea is you're gonna slip and you're gonna. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he wasn't just about the eating the fruit, yeah. right. but don't go in that yeah. in that you know that that space. Yeah. So I think it's. So that's that's basically so in here. So we talked about al munafiqun and how those munafiqun are going to be screaming and shouting and the believer and say, please, you know, do this for us. Open the door. Open the door. You know. So. Anything else? But in, in, in trying to define also those hypocrites, it's not only the one that support uh, the, the unjust ruler or anything. No. It's like some that they say something and something else, or they lie. I, I mean, yeah. That that it's a big really umbrella. It's not only that. That's correct. That's correct. It's it's one word. Is amana. A hypocrite doesn't have an amana, and if you don't have amana, you don't have iman. And if you don't have iman, you are a Muslim by, by, by uh, name. How do you define amana? What do you mean you say amana? Meaning. Amana means. No, amana means faithfulness, trustworthiness, integrity, loyalty. This is all amana. That's what I'm saying. That is. Uh, yes. uh, yeah. uh, you know, so you have, you have all this all this umbrella of amana that you know like a, a, a little a story a very a quick story this is malik ibn dinar malik ibn dinar was in the time of uh, 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 hassan al-basri and anas ibn malik malik ibn dinar saw in a dream his deceased friend standing by the gates of heaven he asked him he says what did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do with you he says Oh Malik, I am stranded outside the gates of heaven, not allowed to get inside. He says, why? You were a mu'min, you were a good person, you did this and that. He says, I have borrowed a needle from my neighbor. And I forgot to return it to my neighbor before my death or willed it to my family so I can return it. Okay, so he woke up stressed and he went to his neighbor's family and told them where the needle is as he was told. He returned it back to their owner, rightful owner. And they later saw him in a dream. He saw him enjoying one of the gardens of the gardens of heaven. And he says, oh Malik, oh Malik, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save you and uh, from the hardship as you have saved me from a hardship so we're talking about needle this is amana imagine people who steal billions of dollars from their own people and that's needle. that's why i'm saying once you establish this amana you know you are a good moment you know ya ayyuha alladhina amanu ittaqu allah wa kunu ma'as sadiqin oh you believe oh you mu'min have taqwa in allah and be trustworthy faithful if you don't have that trust for with uh, trustworthiness you don't have taqwa you don't have iman and then you're only a muslim